Good morning. Welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. In the chapel, for God's gifts and His call are irrevocable. Romans 11:29. So, um, with that said, there's going to be people that don't like what I have to say or don't like the way that I work my wool. Talents are talents, and we do what we have to do. Um, there are as many ways to work wool as there is people doing it so remember that and please no rudeness uh, as we go through this so um let's see off the hook so i was working on a virus shawl and i said i think i'm really going to keep it for me well then some things happened and i ended up giving it away and i'll tell you about that in the farmhouse so i don't have it it's done see but i don't have it I ended up giving it away. So the virus shawl I was working on from last week that I just had that one little section to do uh, is gone. Yeah, already gave it away, went on. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. That being said, I have the geo in timeout and that um, scarf that's being done. That's that really fine stuff that is being done from a chart. I have those two in timeout, and the only thing that I have on the hook is my last kit, which is this. Now, I've already changed this pattern just a little bit. Um, so, let me see if I can show you. This bulky line right here is too thick for me. When I started doing this one, and I've gotten this far, um, it just, I'm looking for my hook, lost my hook again, that's okay. Um, so, I started doing this, I love this wool, it's the Lincoln Fog or whatever, it's amazing, it's soft. So, I started working this up, and I like the pattern. But the yarn with the right size hook, and I didn't want to change because I don't want it. I mean, this shows it with that size hook as being pretty long. I don't want it really, really, really long. So I uh, decided that I wasn't going to change the hook size. But it made it thicker than I thought it would. I don't want those big rows that are right here and you can see them I don't want them so thick so I changed the what they call it is it a front pole or a back pole it's a back pole or back post double crochet um it's like you would do for ribbing I changed that to just a double crochet so um I have my half uh, half double crochets and I have double crochet and then I have my pattern then I have my um, one that, that, that's half doubles and then they so any place really on this pattern that showed a back post which is the ones with the little hooks on it so this row right here see those little hooks this is supposed to be a half double crochet back pole or no a half yeah half double crochet back pole or whatever and i changed it to just a double crochet um i'm not going to double crochet back pole but anyway i changed that one row it lays flatter it has the bump pattern it's just not so the material isn't so thick and i do think that it's beautiful so it is coming along quite nicely. Um, I like it. I really do. It's, like I said, it's going to be a little bit thicker than I thought, but I like it. So this is all I've been, that is all the crochet. I, I finished that one and that is all the crochet that I have because like I said, I'm going to keep some crochet things around, but the big thing is 
this over here. Okay, so I am right now keeping true to my word. So to get the one thing out of here that's big is I still have from where Worm um, ruined that uh, ruck that I did on the peg loom. To salvage this, I'm untwisting it and spinning it. I have um, just, I've worked a little bit on it. I have maybe a quarter of a bobbin. Now, if you'll notice, I don't always take this little guy apart. And this is a little bit older wheel. And I just don't, it spins and it spins, there, but I have it, I like it set my way. So this right here is, I'll move the camera over so you can see. It's quarter bobbin. See? Yes. And it's spinning up nicely. Uh, like I said, this wheel, a little bit more temperamental than my other one. I love spinning on her, don't get me wrong. But I don't like taking her apart and then getting the tension rod if you look so tension rod the tension cord so here is this if you look right here and I'm gonna try and do this without making y'all sick that band isn't the original band and it's very thin because I can't get the tension I want with a thicker drive band if that makes sense um remember that miss kitty is older she is somewhat warped at times it depends on oklahoma humidity whether we got the fireplace going i spin on her anyway okay it doesn't hit and it's fine so yeah i spin on her anyway she is my, my baby i love her so um she's getting a little dusty dirty I don't like to to spin with my shoes on because I feel like that takes all the dirt from outside and puts it on my pedal. But this week I've had my boots on, I've been working, and I have yet to kick them off and go barefoot. I normally spin barefoot. I it's just me. Doesn't mean there's a right or wrong. Um, doesn't mean I'm germaphobe or anything. I just don't like how much the world is tracked in on my wheel if I'm using my boots or my shoes or whatever and I've just always spun I can get a better rhythm um, I also have a, uh, the Kiwi is two treadle you know sometimes you'll look up and I got my leg crossed up underneath it and I'm just a one treadle <laughs> it still goes um, this happens to be a one treadle so anyway so I've got that much done I want to set that and then pull this um i did work on that this is different melt uh i have and i need to put this on here because as we all know worm loves wool and i have found that if i leave my wool on the lazy susan he is less apt to go after it the lazy susie lazy susan or what lazy whatever this thing lazy kate sorry lazy susan's the one that goes around in circles this is a lazy kate um anyway if i leave it on my lazy kate with the tension just enough that they don't spin he doesn't go after them i don't know if it's too much work but i've been spinning the other one if you remember oh i don't even know when let's look here uh let's see if it tells me a date no, it doesn't tell me a date, but a while back, I bought like six pounds of, oh, in February of 2021, hence why I need to spin. I bought six pounds of uh, wool from the R.H. Lindsay Company and i have wrongly been referring to one and it's actually the other that i was spinning so i bought two pounds of new zealand romney top i bought two pounds of domestic wool 
and I bought two pounds of primitive wool. Um, yeah, I gave like eight dollars a pound, eight fifty a pound. Um, the domestic wool I gave seven fifty a pound for. Got two pounds for fifteen bucks. Now, in case you don't know what two pounds is, let me show you. Two pounds, and it is packed in here. Um, I roll them into four ounce balls. This is what's left, and each four ounce ball, I can get almost the entire thing on one bobbin, depending on my thickness and thinness. The way I standardly spin, which is a fingering weight, I can get all four ounces on each regular bobbin, okay? So, it, that doesn't work for plying, but yeah, for the regular bobbin. So, I'm going to guess that this has just under four ounces on it. Yeah. So, I was calling, I thought I started with the domestic wool. However, looking at my statement and my wool that I have left deciding what I was going to do next I started with my primitive so yeah I think I'm going to go to the domestic next um, this right here is Romney top okay it is and none of these are super super great wools like super soft I'm gonna they're soft. I love them. But, I mean, I felt better, Romney. But for when you're working wool, this is pretty amazing. For the price that I gave, I got two pounds for $16.50. So, what is that? Eight and a quarter? Two pounds. Eight and a quarter. And I didn't have to buy two pounds. I could have just bought one. They'll mail you the smaller quantities or whatever. Um, I don't know how small the quantities are, but it's beautiful, it's soft, and there's not enough difference in softness between this and the domestic or primitive, because here is the domestic. Now, you could do micron count and say, oh, my goodness, this one's so much softer. No, that one has a, a different micron count. But this is the domestic. I'm looking for the end. Mm -mm -mm. This may be why I didn't start with this, because I'm going to dump this whole bag out to find the end. Oh, no. No, no, no. I guess I could just create an end. I hate doing that, though. It disturbs the fiber. Or at least I think it disturbs the fiber. Okay. Well... We just gonna create an end. Alright. So this is the domestic. And it is beautiful. Look at that. So it is just as soft, if not softer, than the New Zealand top. So or Romney top. Yeah, New Zealand Romney top, and this is domestic wool top. And then the other one that I did was primitive wool top. So, let's see if I can't get it out a little bit. There we go. If you look at this, and then you look at this, and in all fairness, I'm going to break this apart just like I did the other so you can see how it because this I just pulled out. But watch this if I can. There we go. See? It the color is the same. It is about the same softness. Um I'm not even yeah. I mean oddly enough, the New Zealand top feels rougher to me than the domestic wool does but they're so close 
nobody's gonna see I mean they're wonderful to spin and for that price oh my goodness I did I bought two pounds and I still have four pounds left to go <laughs> two pounds of each and I have four pounds left to go now I'm trying to decide if I do the New Zealand Romney or if I do the domestic wool I'm thinking I'm gonna save the domestic wool for later because it's to me it seems like the one I really really want so I'm thinking that the domestic wool can go put away until I get the New Zealand yeah. now you will notice a color difference that's the color of the sheep some are cream some are more cream they're never really a true white um, but yeah you can't tell when it's like that but you can definitely tell when they're up against each other Let's see just the different colors of the sheep and this one's a little bit more creamy colored and I actually think I have a plan for that one um so yeah anyway so I've been deciding on this Let, let's back up a little bit okay so this and if we do this to the same thing now this primitive wool was dirtier than those okay but it doesn't say top so it may but when you do this it's the same it is a little bit rougher this is like the roughest one but it's still soft um this is what i made roommates christmas present out of so yeah i have this little bit left to go um i have a bobbin on the wheel and i should end up with a second bobbin looking like this okay now here's where you know i said there's as many ways to do wool as there is people doing it you can look here and i've made an oops um the dogs like to help me so my tension got off and this is not wound onto the bobbin great so it flops over and it's got little nicks and you know you can see the little things that i didn't get out by the time i get done processing it there won't be any of that stuff in there um i normally do it and i spin it and then if there's any like little flecks or or dirt I take my nail and up and down the the um, ply and it normally comes out if it doesn't it's loose enough that it comes out in the wash so all right so I've been spinning that now I did say I had two pounds not only have I been spinning but for those of you who don't know this is a jumbo flyer I believe or maybe it's a country time flyer it is one of Kiwi's bigger flyers that holds more and I mean you can see the difference in the size of the bobbins this is a bobbin for that flyer that's a bobbin for the regular so yeah this one holds more now I ply on this okay so I've got this and this is the end so if you get up in there it's this is kind of start to come untwisted but when I get it soaked and stuff it will do I'm trying to make it focus there we go so yeah it is coming along quite nicely now not only did I have all that that I did for roommate sweater but I have this and I have this and then I have the two small bobbins that I still have to ply and this that I need to finish spinning on that other bobbin so yardage I don't know what I have right now but I know it I should be I, I, these are definitely more than 200 yards I, I'm pretty sure I can't remember from doing roommates but I wanted to say they were almost 500 maybe don't know maybe it was three something but I know that each of these should be more than 250 yards which was my goal so I am off today and I will probably finish spinning this and plying it and have it all done and off the scanner and everything this evening 
and then I will start one of my lovely other ones and I really do think that I'm going to leave that domestic and start with the New Zealand um, just because but what does this all mean <laughs> it means you should see some dyeing next week because I'm also off Thursday so I will try to video the dyeing I make no promises you may just see the end result but I am going to try and set my little laptop up and I just use my little camera on my laptop it it's not oh I can't show you if I I was going to hold the camera in front of the camera it's like a C920 something uh, logistic just a little clip on camera and so um, I've pretty much quit using my phone unless I wanted it to be portable to show you guys a room or something. Oh, I have a text. Um, but that's it. So I'm not making fancy, fancy video. But anyway. Um, let's see what else. Uh. Mm -mm. I don't know. Don't know, don't know, don't know. So, um, <clears throat> I think that is all I have that's fibery. We're going to move right on into, uh, in the farmhouse because it's got a lot of little things, um, some things that RJ's world, all that. So let's start with in the farmhouse. Um, I didn't work anymore on the bathroom, but I have decided that for the 15 people that are, um, what do you call it? Uh, at the office, I've decided that next year for Christmas, I'm going to make Zen gardens, but I am shopping the deals. I am not doing, um, I'm going to find just some little, I could take a frame from the Dollar Tree, put some sand in it, and then have the little rakes. I could uh, plant, cute little plant dishes, put some sand in it and have the little rake, and then just buy like river rocks or beads or whatever. Well, when I went to do this, the one thing that was costing me, going to cost me a lot of money was the little rakes. So... I was sitting here one night and I don't know I just looked and I found this wholesale site and I got now unfortunately they're all the same I didn't get everybody set but I got them these little guys I gave 62 cents I had a coupon and they're for Zen Gardens I ordered 15 of them had a coupon plus free shipping. Anyway, I got them for $14.62 for all 15. Yes. So I ordered those and I got those in. I am going to go to like Dollar Tree and all of that. And the only thing that's going to be in these is a river rock, one animal because it's for a vet office, the rake, the base, and the sand. Um, now, if I could find some little bushes or trees, someplace inexpensive. I'm not talking Hobby. I'm talking they look like Hobby Lobby, but I don't want Hobby Lobby because they're like three or four dollars a piece. So, and I'm doing these for 15 people. I want to keep it under five dollars um, for each one. So, the rake I have under a dollar. The sand, the rake, the sand, the river rock I know is going to be way under a dollar, so it's not but then the little animal probably won't be so and then the base so that's what I'm doing with those I'm super excited to get those rakes and I figure if I shop all year long watch sales I should be get be able to get you know um, a cute little sand thing done okay uh, then in RJ's world so that that's my big buy I'm like woo! if y'all want to follow along me making the Zen gardens um, the Zen sand gardens I guess I don't know if you want to follow that along 
So far, I have the rakes. And I am making them for 15 people at the office. So I'll let you know where I find the the discs and all that. I was going to say, that's what I picked up my phone for. Um, I was looking for the name of the place. Um, and of course, it's in my email and I keep hitting text. I am not proficient on my phone. This is why I don't video with it very much. RJ was super good with it. Um, so the rakes I got at AliExpress, A-L-I Express, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, -E -S, and I got them for 62 cents a piece. Snagged a coupon. My first time doing anything really online that saved me, you know, money. So, anyway, uh, but yes, 62 cents a piece, got those at Ali, A-L-I Express, one word, and those are amazing. I, the dishes that they have on there are, I'm having trouble with the measurements. I'm going to have to go and actually look at a five inch, um, especially if I do round, because I want them to sit on their desks, but I don't want them so small that you can't do the rake or the rock and the little animal. I want it to be, you know, I want to be able to put the little rock in there and the little animal and then, you know. So I have a specific size that I want. A five by seven frame is what I've came up, come up with so far. But with the round ones, I don't know because it takes it down so much smaller. So I'm just going to go and see. Uh, okay, enough about that. Let's, we're going to move on into Archie's world because he had an amazing week. First off, it didn't start out amazing. Um, on Tuesday, I get a call from RJ and he's like, Mom, I need help. What? What's the matter? You know, that's your first reaction is, what's the matter? He said that he was out <coughs> riding. He hadn't been back to the very back part of the property in almost a week. It was New Year's week. You know, he had been here for Christmas and his girlfriend's for Christmas and New Year's him and his girlfriend, you know, and he fit rodeos in there. He put on his own rodeo on the 26th. So he had not been to the very back of the property in probably a week to 10 days. So he calls me and he says, I need help. I said, what? He said, I found three puppies living under the John boat. He says, Mom, they're so skinny. He said, not only can you see their ribs, but their skin sinks in on the ends of their ribs. I said, oh my goodness. I said, I don't know what to do. I said, there's no place to take them. Like, no, in the county that we live in, there is... South Coffeeville, who has an animal control officer, won't take anything from outside the town. No water that has an animal control officer and won't take anything outside the town. That's it. There's no SPCA. There is no Humane Society. There is no anywhere that will take the animals from that that are abandoned. So if you abandon something in that county, you're pretty much sentencing it to die. Okay, so that first off, it angers me, as you can tell. Breaks my heart that someone would do that. RJ doesn't have the heart to, you know, they say, oh, out in the country, you just put them down. They mean shoot them, okay? We're not those kind of people. If you have followed us at all, you know we're not that kind of people. Just saying. So he's found these three puppies. And I said, you know what? Just load them up the truck and bring them to me. I called the clinic where I work, told them what was going on. The vet there, she works with the Tulsa Humane Society. She says, you know what? Just bring them to me. Just bring them. Just get them here. So RJ literally leaves his horse saddled. It took him quite a while to get them to trust him. He kept having to pick up the little one. There was two boys and a girl. And the girl was the smallest. He kept having to pick up the little girl to carry them. They just 
then he used food to entice him into the truck and one about bit him they were so starved um he's like i don't know so he drove the first leg of the trip from noada down here and then he followed me to my office um because they wouldn't all fit in my car the kennel that he had them in wouldn't fit physically in my car <laughs> just saying so we get there rj had already um talked to the vet and said that they had a hoarding situation and uh she needed a place to take a bunch of roosters rj says you know what we free range they can come out to us we've lost a lot of our flock to coyotes so i i make no guarantees but more than welcome to bring them out there free range i do throw feed out to them when it's cold you know he says i don't let them starve but pretty much they're free range to find bugs and find this and that and you know and i give them a little feed here and there to make sure that they're doing okay she says okay that's perfect so when rj drove the dogs she knew he was coming and she called the sp the humane society and said get those birds here now because they're going to a new home we're getting them all out so we met up there and this is tuesday met up there and um she warmed the dogs gave them their first set of shots not the same day okay but the first day, all she did was give them a good checking over. She says they look good. They're just really thin. She says everything, you know, vetting their ears, their nose, their mouth, their, you know, she warmed them. And we started them on a four time a day feeding regimen. We estimated them to be about 12 weeks old. Uh, very thin. So we got those taken care of. RJ got the birds from the guy, took them back, and he's like, okay, I'm done. He had actually thought about keeping one of the pups to put with Jethro, because Jethro is getting old. He sleeps a little sounder. If you remember, this summer we had a scare with Jethro. Um, he went downhill kind of quick. I got him to the vet got him taken care of got him warm got him special food he just he's older he's quite a bit older so um anyway for great pyrenees lab mix he's lived a full life but rj's scared to not have something out there to keep the predators away he says mama i i can't do it i rely on jethro he always has that deep bark and you know keeps coyotes at bay best he can now we've been losing chickens and poultry to him he's just older and he can't do it um so he uh because the vet had taken these in and they were just at the vet clinic as trying to get them adopted out um rj rodeos with glenn jackson who is a stunt guy for yellowstone okay he does most of roping and riding and you know he he's an amazing rider but anyway he uh does most of that for him and he's from oklahoma he lives here in oklahoma and he ropes with rj we mounted him on coop all the time him and rj trade horses if they need to they haul together in the same truck they are friends well because the vet did that for us and took these dogs i i called glenn i said hey she's a really big yellowstone fan would you be willing he says you know what i'm gonna be up in your area i said i'll buy you lunch just come by we'll go eat lunch so he plans on coming by to surprise my boss um rj calls me that morning that glenn was supposed to come which was wednesday or thursday can't remember yeah anyway i think it was wednesday because he comes like the next day anyway that day rj calls me he says what time's glenn meeting you at your office and i said well 11 11 30 we're gonna go to lunch why he says somebody dumped a great pyrenees puppy 
at Glenn's house, and Glenn's going to bring it up to you. He says, I'm going to drive up, bring this other kennel back from the clinic, pick up this dog. I said, great. I said, we'll leave the dog at the clinic. And I said, you want to go to lunch with us? So whatever day it was, I went, I think it was Wednesday. I went, took the boys out to eat. Um, but we surprised my boss. She was so giddy and so happy. He autographed one of his little card things for him. And it was awesome. Everybody took pictures with him and just happy as a little lark. Just happy, you know. And it was just my way of thanking them. Glenn's a great guy. He plays along, you know. He's, he's very humble and very down to earth and it's funny because my boss looked at me and she goes how is it that everyone around you is so quiet yet you're so outgoing and bubbly and blah, 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 blah. i said i don't know but rj and glenn are both very quiet very standoffish so anyway we had a lot of fun with it. I went to lunch with them. RJ got the puppy, um, sending it to the farm. When it gets a little bit bigger, we're going to bring it back. We're going to get it neutered. Um, it just came to be in a weird way. But Friday, I get this phone call from a rescue. Now, we have posted everybody that works there. We're not set up to do rescue. Okay, we're not. And the Humane Society, or yeah, the Humane Society that works with my boss couldn't legally take the dogs because they weren't from Nowata County, or from Tulsa County. So again, these puppies are caught in this loop where there's nowhere for them to go. Well, long story short, we posted, and I say we, there wasn't a person from that clinic that didn't put post on their personal Facebook page and say, guys, spread the word. They're super thin. They're whatever. So one of the ladies had posted, and I guess a friend of a friend of a friend got it to a rescue. The rescue saw it and said, they, they called me Friday morning. And when she first called, she didn't identify herself really. She just was inquiring. She says, I saw these puppies on Facebook through Mona's page. You know, I tracked it back to Mona's page and I just was really interested in them. What can you tell me about them? So I tell her the story of what happened and that they survived. And the days that they were out there under the boat was a cold snap. And we're talking it snowed. It, it went down to like 17 degrees at night. I can't believe they didn't freeze to death. I'll be honest with you. I can't believe as thin as they were, they didn't freeze to death and die. Anyway, makes me mad, tears me up. So she calls, she just inquired. She says, how many is there? I said, there's three. She says, well, what does it cost to adopt them? I said, nothing. We just need them to go to homes that we're not set up for this. So she says, let me make some phone calls. She calls, um, back like 30 minutes later and at the time I couldn't help but think but I didn't have time for this right now we're down a couple of people at work because they're out sick we were shorthanded we it was just me up front on a day that there should have been two of us um I just didn't have all the time in the world to sit and talk to this lady. So she called the second time and I keep the first pop. Oh man, I don't have time for this, you know, but I wanted the puppies to get a home. So I took some time, but I was still rushed if that makes sense. So she then identifies herself as being with the German short haired pointer rescue association. And she says, those look like German short haired pointers. And she says, please Google them. And I Google them and it's like, yes, I, okay, I can see that. I said, we don't know the breed. I'm not gonna say they are. I'm not gonna say they aren't. We don't know. Number one, they're too underweight. We can't even really see a, a body type. All we can see is their skeleton and I can't really make a guess off of that. She 
talk to me a little bit more. She says, okay, she says, I have some, I, I might be able to get them into foster homes. She says, but it all comes down to cost and how much we have to reimburse you. And I went, for what? And she goes, well, it says that they're fully vetted. They've been warm. They've had their first round of shots. They've had a checkup. If there's a vet bill, she says, that's what's going to determine how many I can take. And I just started giggling. It's all I could do. I said, ma'am, you are so confused. She said, what do you mean? I said, there's no reimbursement. I said, there is no cost. I said, we did what we did because that's what we're able to do for these dogs. I said, we've done what we can do. Now they need a home and time. I said, there's no cost in that. I said, if you have foster homes lined up, you need to come get them. No cost. I said, our customers, and this is the funny part, our customers had donated food for them, uh, treats for them, uh, they, they brought in some old towels for them. I said, you can even take all the stuff that was donated for them. I said, what we need is homes. No cost, just homes. You can have all the donated stuff. She goes, are you serious? <laughs> I said, yes. I said, we're not a rescue. We're not out to make money on this. These guys need a home. I said, if you can provide that, come get them. She said, how many was there? I said, there's three, two boys, one girl. She says, give me 10 minutes. She hangs up the phone. She calls me back and she says, somebody will be there at three o'clock to pick them up. And she says, and we'll take anything and everything you want to donate to us. I said, done. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God. Apparently, and I didn't know this, when rescues are pulling dogs from local shelters to save apparently they're being charged that fee to get them out i'm not like that i never even when i worked at the shelter we didn't do that um they're saving a life you don't charge a rescue to save a life I just can't see it. So anyway, Friday, 3 o'clock comes. The gentleman is in his truck. He calls me, he says, uh, or in his SUV thing. He calls me, he says, ma'am, I'm here to pick up the dogs, but I have a problem. And I said, what's that? And he says, well, he says, I, before I was exposed to COVID, now I've tested positive. I said, you know what? Leave your mask on, stay in the car. We'll bring the dogs to you. And so he got out and stayed at the front of the truck. And then our doctor was at the back and we popped some pictures and put the, let the dogs go potty, put them in the thing. And they are now in a foster home situation. So yay. And that all transpired within that. So the dogs, we found them on Tuesday or RJ found them on Tuesday. By Friday, they were at the rescue. It's amazing. Um, Normally, it doesn't work like that. They've had cats that they've felt bad for that they took in at the shelter that have lived, or at the shelter, at the office that have lived there for like two years before they got home. Everything came into play. Everything worked out. It was an amazing, awesome week. And RJ and I both know that God's working in our lives. So we are super happy with the outcome of that. Um, the puppies, I am sure, are super happy with that. Um, anyway, so it's good. It's all good. Uh, just a little bit different this week, but all good. So, yeah, that's what happened in RJ's world. <laughs> I got to go out to eat with him and Glenn. I, I took them out to eat. Mom always picks up the tab. You know that. So, anyway, I did a bunch of spinning had an amazing week just with God working in my week and just can't wait to see what 2022 is going to bring. I know everybody said that 2021, well, they started with 2020 is horrible because of COVID. And then they said 2021 never did get any better. Can't wait, you know, 2022 better. 
my whole life changed immeasurably in 2021. And looking back, hard road, but definitely worth it and definitely for the better. So my 2021, I don't think it was so bad. I really don't. So this year I am going to keep spinning, keep doing me and just sit back and watch what God does because it's going to be an amazing ride. In the first week, he's already used us several times and I'm okay with that. So, all right, I'm going to get off of here. Sorry for the babbling. It's a little long this time. Did get spinning done, projects done. Sorry you don't get to see the one that I gave away. By the way, when Glenn came up and made that appearance for me and ate lunch with me and brought RJ the dog, I sent that um, shawl that I was working on that I said, oh, I might keep it for me. Glenn's wife, Julie, has it. That was my thank you. Um, Glenn is just like a lot of other men. He never goes... And I actually had to give him the word. He's like, I never get her. I never buy her anything. And I said, we well, didn't buy her anything. I said, now don't you be lying to that girl. I said, you got her something. And he goes, yeah, I did. I said, so when you go home, you look at her and say, I got you something, baby. And you give it to her. I said, you're not lying. You didn't do, you know, you didn't buy it. You didn't. I said, it was given to you. For the specific intent of you to give to her. He goes, that's cool. He says, I love you. <laughs> I said, I know. <laughs> we went out to eat and we ate at Cracker Barrel. Had a great time. Um, he's a good guy. He is as down to earth as they come. He's, he's just like a little bit older version of RJ. So, anyway. I'm off of here. You guys have a great week. Please, please explore your talents. And watch what God has to do in your life. The little things. The little miracles. And the little way he uses you. Um, I think you'll be surprised. Talk to you next week. Bye.